Ready, go. Alrighty, ladies and gents, welcome to the show. We have a very special guest with us on today. None other than Mr. Tom Boyden and John Call yeah. from the Juji and Tom YouTube channel. Gents, how are we? They were great. Thank you for having us in your kitchen. <laughs> yes, for well, this podcast. Hey, you know, the, only kitchen. the best. Only the best when it comes to studios. So, um, but hey, we, we got there. We got there. So, guys, what's Australia been like so far for you? Well, the coffee's really good. Yes, <laughs> fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. And it's you know they're always asking us how you like the coffee, and it's a good question to ask because it's that much better. It is. <laughs> it is like, really I, actually I, good. I have to say that when I've been to the US, I've been a little bit. Sad with the coffee situation, but yeah, you're relegated to Starbucks pretty often. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a sad thing because they make they they have fake coffee. You know, yeah. <laughs> they don't actually they're not pulling any shots, man. Yeah, I, th- I think Australia they're not. They're, they're not. They're no, it's all fake, dude. They just plug in something, the machine makes it for them. Here, they're doing it. They're from, doing it real from scratch. From scratch. You didn't know that. No, you've been swindled all your life. You <laughs> have. Yeah. All I knew is that their <laughs> coffee was better. And I didn't know why. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. So the the purpose of the trip for you guys, you were down here uh, doing some seminars, train fun, mm-hmm. um, and you were in Melbourne with some strongman uh, events as well. Mm-hmm. So um, tell us a little bit about those events and why you guys are actually out here. Yeah. So we were at the Standard Summit. It's a it's a new kind of like strongman event that our friend Mason put together, mm-hmm. and uh, you just kind of wanted to bring back a little bit of the flair from the. 80s strongman scene where it's just like these kind of crazy theatrical looking things they kind of took that at a strongman these days to make it more controlled so competitors can't complain about what is this event this is a freak event i couldn't train for this so he's kind of you know now you got like a two-person yoke you got these weird chain pulls you got like tug of war battles with a pole and stuff all these crazy things that people want to (laughs) see but real competitive athletes will get agitated for if they ever have to do those in competition so you throw those into an event you know you had a huge barbell you do it at night with a lot of fire and a bunch of people dressed up in skeleton outfits and you got something and uh, you, you forgot a big big part of the recipe yeah a lot of alcohol a lot of <laughs> alcohol was present <laughs> so, right yeah you you got you guys big drinkers or no no no, no. no. Well, juju probably drinks more than me nowadays but i used to be i used to sell wine so well australia's good for wine too so you, yeah you, did you, you could have tapped into that whilst you were here no we just tapped into the uh, the caffeine plug but uh, no, I mean, we, we watched a lot of people drink pretty, yeah. pretty well that yeah. night. Yeah. Well, if you didn't see them drink, you knew they were drinking too. Yeah, they were just the way they t- turned up. It's just like, it's very like <laughs> obvious, like this person is uh, sure. posted. So did you guys actually uh, compete in this as well as get up in skeleton no. outfits? No. No, Juji okay. has swung a hand. The event was from 6 p.m. till almost 2 in the morning. Mm. It was really long. And uh, they wanted to do us as surprise guests, uh, and and Luke Stoltman, who's the seventh strongest man in the world, he's okay. a Scottish lad, big yeah. guy, 150 kg, huge dude, um, and just a really nice guy. He uh, he was there, and he was a surprise uh, guest, and so for from like 5 p.m. till 6:30, they just hit us in the house. And uh, we were supposed to actually, the the one thing that has happened multiple times, also during a WAL broadcast, Juju was not paying attention during that one, so I would, I would call that one on him. But this <laughs> that was, was my this, fault. That, that was, was definitely your fault. Yeah, that one was, uh, he definitely missed a cue. Uh, <laughs> but this one was not our fault. They just, they told us to wait in this house for a surprise, and, and Juju was supposed to go on this throne, um, <laughs> and I was, I was going to make tons of jokes about ego and big head, and none, none of those got to come to fruition uh, because they didn't call him at the time. They yep. forgot about me. Right. There you go. <laughs> yeah. You left in the they house They built this alone. gigantic throne. Drinking coffee. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, and, and they had these uh, flamethrowers that were these pyrotechnics oh, wow. that were going to shoot out. And uh, he wasn't present for those. So they didn't have that announcement. <laughs> and then we were just <laughs> dicking around for about an hour and a half until they did the surprise <laughs> thing. And, and then we were there. Just, uh, I mean, I was filming and Juju was just there cheering people on. That was like his his role was just to cheer people on. Yeah, yeah. okay. Until he swung a hammer at one thirty in the morning to uh, break an atlas stone made out of lower quality con- concrete. Nice. Well, it would have looked good. Yeah. Looked good. Yeah. yeah. So he <laughs> and I did very little Okay. during the event yeah. other than film it and yeah, hang and, around. And, and miss the fireworks. It would have been good. 
I it would have, that would have been that cool. That would have looked pretty spectacular. You weren't, mm-hmm. well, you weren't coming in on like a cable wire or something as well, were you? No, Luke came in on the cable thing. So well, someone did come did, in on yeah. the cable yeah. wire. Yeah. 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 They did. They <laughs> actually raised them up on the... Uh, the Excavator with a large steel pipe. Yeah, nice. And he, but that was that Luke's job. was we, we felt like we had very minimal to do, but um, Luke Stoltman came out with a sword once, said a few things <laughs> on the mic, just drank a bunch, and then was on a steel pipe riding in on an excavator construction awesome. vehicle, and that was all he did. That was it. <laughs> yeah, and then he was just just drunk as shit. It was great. But, really but fun. Seventh strongest man, eh? That's yeah, the, yeah. That's pretty cool. Hey, tell me about the, the, the Train Fund seminars that you guys did. Right. So uh, me and Tom uh, wanted to start doing seminars because we're leaving a lot on the table. You know, we can teach a lot of things, mm-hmm. and our YouTube channel has moved towards the direction in the past few years. It's well, it's been in this direction since we started working together. It's more about entertaining and making people feel like they're welcomed and uh, feel like they're behind the scenes working with these, uh, you know, incredible athletes. Like they get to know them on a different level and we get to banter and it's a lot of fun. But the educational component isn't as uh, it's not as direct. So they get to learn stuff through us indirectly as we're learning things. So there might be a video of me arm wrestling, Tom arm wrestling, and we're being taught stuff, you know, but it's not like, hey. We're going to teach you something. Right. So, or we're teaching people backflips, or uh, those ones are we're teaching someone a backflip, but we're not teaching the audience to backflip. It's not a tutorial video, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's kind of like putting broccoli in a little kid's mac and cheese. Yeah, okay. it is. That's like good sneaking analogy. it in, and yeah. they don't know why they like it, <laughs> and they don't know why they feel good afterwards. Mm-hmm. But it's because we snuck the broccoli well, in their mac well, and I cheese. Well, I can, I can, I can attest to that. That, that um, I tasted the broccoli a little bit, mm-hmm. um, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, so it yeah. was good. It was salted. I, yeah, <laughs> seasoned. I think um, so. Th- the people who attend these uh, train fund seminars, as you said, they get to, to feel like they're part of it. But it's not about creating a show for you guys there is it like you're really it's it's almost personal training isn't it i mean essentially i, I would say it's juju leading it and then uh i'm just assisting in the structure and the organization and assisting in uh anyone who needs help on certain movements but really it's just uh it's essentially what, how i'm thinking about it is like they watch the videos and all these different movements and strength sports we do and we're essentially introducing them to all of the things that we do on a daily basis you know people are always asking hey how do you uh how do you train around deadlifting rock climbing and running in a week and we're like Mm. well we we know because we do that yeah and uh there's not a lot of athletes that do as many diverse things that we do in a week I would uh. <laughs> I would agree with that that that's that's the clear and obvious standout factor from your your channel is that the volume and the diversity of what you guys get up to is amazing and and I I I, I am someone who have always trained with a lot of frequency but never across mm-hmm. so many disciplines so yeah you're super niche you're the yeah. opposite of us you're just yeah. like just deep do this down right? just yeah, do this. Like <laughs> approach a deadlift bar and then you start curling it <laughs> sure, yeah man. go yeah. for it uh, do you, do you guys have a favorite out of all the disciplines. That uh, have, that I, if I were to pick one, it would just have to be the tricking. The yeah, acrobatics we, is my we favorite. Say that, yeah. That's the one that makes <laughs> me feel the best about myself. That's the one I started with. That's the one that, uh, if I had to just pick one, that's what I would choose. Unfortunately, yeah. that's not what the viewers want. Yep. They want to see everything. And that's great because I like everything more than the one because I don't mm-hmm. have to choose. We can yeah. do it all. And that, yeah. that's one of the strengths of your, your YouTube channel, I'd say, is you bring out the best in a lot of other people. You You do collaborations with people from all walks of life, elite athletes in, in most respects. Um, but you guys bring out the best in other people. How do, how do you guys go about achieving that? Mm, I, th- I don't know. What do you think, Tom? Uh, I mean, I think it's a combination of the, uh, there's like, there's two sides of the uh, team, Juji Tom, right? I'm more, uh, I research people, I speak with them before, I look at their background, look at their, uh, history and training and all of these things and structure videos around it that allows us to, uh, I guess, impulsively hang out with them well. Yeah. But it's a lot of like all the pre stuff going into meeting them and and I collaborate with I you know I do their flights in the hotel and I'm just handing out to an assistant <laughs> or some shit. Yeah. Um. Busy. And we and we we always fly out people and all that. So it's kind of like that preemptive. Kind of uh, research plus uh, collaboration, and then when we actually get into the uh, 
videos of it. It's I think it's just our um, it's just the what we bring to the table as a duo synergy, and then how we just kind of make things fun with everyone else. Yeah. And not all guests it works for. You know, I have to edit heavily some guests that aren't that enjoyable people, yeah. or we didn't get along with that great. But people don't notice that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I genuinely like people. I think yeah. overall, I'm pretty optimistic in that respect, and I, I'm good at finding the best in people. But you know, there are some guests that that clam up a bit. You know, maybe like ten percent, five percent. We've gotten a lot better at choosing who to work with. Uh, yeah. You know, and we can choose more people now because we're on a, a different level in the socials, where more mm-hmm. people are willing to work with us. And well, you guys are you guys are a big name out there now in the I guess what we, what what do you ca- category do you put yourself in the sports fitness YouTube industry is that like a loose fit or fitness yeah fitness and strength uh, yeah. we uh, I've been wanting to do more sports lately that's why we did rugby in Melbourne because yeah. uh, that's just kind of another how group. did that go I want to know did you guys stand up to the rugby oh uh, yeah it stood up <laughs> uh, my favorite part was just like Juji throwing a spiral uh, trying to throw the spiral with the rugby ball and yeah. then all the players just laughing <laughs> uh, it was just so fun to watch could you do could you do it better one way or the other or? I can always do it better on the first try the first try, yeah, first just, try, and then just, it would just, just get progressively cold. worse. Yeah, is, is, is that is there. that consistent with all sports for you? Just gosh, maybe it almost is because my first experience with arm wrestling was extremely like successful. Looking back, I was like, I just followed directions. They just told me, okay, so it's actually like about the one year anniversary of us mm-hmm. doing anything arm wrestling related. We got into it because there's it's a, a little over, yeah. Uh, the fitness exhibition in Anaheim in August of last year. It's August now, so it's almost exactly a year. Uh, we had a booth, and we were doing grip exercises and meeting and greeting and having a good time, and we kind of go around to the back of the booth, and there's this arm wrestling part. Okay, yeah. this is you, uh, Ultimate Arm Wrestling League, Yep. yep. and uh, Bill oh, yeah. Collins was the guy yeah. running it. And, good league, uh, good league. Yeah, and uh, Alex Delator was mm-hmm. uh, someone else working the event, and we just go over there, and they're like, yeah, you can come in tomorrow, and we'll give you 15 minutes of coaching, and you can enter. <laughs> and we were confident that uh, you'll have a good time. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. did show up, and sure enough, they mm-hmm. gave me instructions. They gave him instructions, and they basically, it was like a one play out of a playbook. Like, do this, exactly do this, do this, do this, do this. I just followed instructions. Mm-hmm. So all I did was just, uh, when they started, it was ready, set, and I would just go into a deep hook and deep sink as hard as I could yeah. I had no pre-existing injuries with arm wrestling so I wasn't I didn't have arm pain I didn't really know the dangers all I know is like I'm just going to follow these instructions and I, yeah. I won an amateur event there that's good cool. but uh well, winning, winning an amateur so event. like you can look back and be like first try you did good but then you know yeah you learn more and then you realize yeah how deep does the rabbit hole go yeah you guys are how good out. was the competition that day right yeah well I think the average arm wrestler within a, an amateur tournament's been pulling at least sort of 12 months at least mm-hmm. two months and, and there's guys that have been hanging around the amateurs for five six years so I, I i remember seeing that video and i think you actually did well like there weren't too many shabby names there there were a couple of guys that are pretty experienced yeah eddie vega know. was there yeah. vega he's he's, a, he's around the circuit but it was uh i think it was just you were it was more cerebral and you were just yeah. doing it rather than overthinking it and and uh yeah and and you were also uh, the interesting thing is that you were you were faster off the ready set go mm. in that tournament than anyone since then yeah uh ever since then i think you've been overthinking uh, like <laughs> the ready, afraid, ready go. it hurts it hurts yeah. so much now i just don't like ready set right you know? right well i mean yeah you shouldn't like it but uh but it was just interesting to see that so know. it's now become one of the many sports that you guys regularly participate in yeah which is cool that's yeah. cool and I, I guess that's how i ended up crossing paths with you i saw you guys with devon we did the bottom eight and then I saw your arm um, wrestle Artem. You got a sneaky win on Artem too there. I think that uh, by sneaky, I mean I mean he's an experienced guy, but you put him in his place. So that was pretty cool. I thought he was sneaky because he kept starting beforehand. But, you know, maybe that was my job to start beforehand too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A, lot I, of, a lot of people do that. They're too polite in their early days. Right. And once you realize that you can, the, the match starts before you even walk up to the table. You start taking everything. Well, Artem taught me a really good lesson from learning that is that, you know, most of the matches won in the beginning. Mm. You know, there's a lot, of, a big portion of the matches won in the setup. And also, like, it's a game. Out, it's winning out of five matches. You know, you need mm-hmm. to cut your losses or just know when you're in a bad position. And there's this ego thing. You know, don't try to save yourself when you're going against a guy top rolling you near the pin. It's named Top Roll King. You know, <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking I'm going to show everyone how freaking strong I am and come back for this match. And pop, pop, pop. There goes a bunch of ligaments in my elbow. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that just taught me, like, in a situation like that, I need to know when to quit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 
especially in a super match, which you were in. With yeah. Him, so. Mm-hmm. yeah. So it's just, I learned a lot from that. Yeah. match with him and we're still friends I mean yeah he's a cool know. guy yeah, <laughs> Ar- Ar- yeah he's a Russian <laughs> yeah, he's fine. evil but yeah. yeah hey back to the YouTube channel a bit um, you guys have been quite instrumental in not only your own channel but I feel like you guys have shaped the fitness industry a lot uh, in the way that you present YouTube channels um, have have you with not only with your collaborations but um, I think you've been a lead example for many other aspiring YouTube channels. Uh, do you do you see that? Do you feel that? Is that is that something you enjoy, or where does that kind of sit with you guys? Yeah, Tom uh, comes from a film making background. Uh, you know, he started. Uh, when did you start uh, doing video work for people? Oh, uh, it was like 2012. 2012. Yeah, part time and. And when did, you guys, when did you guys start stuff? working together? 2000 or more than that it was 2010 when I started yeah uh, but 2013 we we met and made a video called Ju- I made a video called the Juji Sessions mm-hmm. so that was our first video we made together um, and then we worked together in uh, 2016 December I reached out to him about doing the YouTube stuff together yep. so yeah and in the structure of you you guys do series within um within each sport. Uh, and like I was saying, I, I feel like you guys have actually been the tip of the spear and that we see other content creators now reflecting a lot of what you guys do. Um, and I think that's that's an awesome thing that you guys have shaped the entire entertainment sports industry. I think it took someone that wasn't completely inundated in the fitness culture coming yeah. in from the outside with, uh, you know, his he's brilliant. You know, Tom is a genius when it comes to making videos. And I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you are. You are. Uh, You're really good at it. But I just, it took someone I mean, like it that. took a lot of work. It wasn't like it naturally came from me from no. YouTube. Yeah. Yep. Making videos is not making YouTube videos, you know. There's yeah. there's people that can make a lot better cinematography, video, I don't know, film, porn, whatever. <laughs> Slow motion, natural <laughs> landscape porn or, or drone footage than me all day. And yeah, people yeah. can do that but I, I youtube's a different ball game you yeah. know and um i think you're right is that the fitness industry was pr- when i came into it i'm like this is uh this is all you just film a workout and film what you're eating this is really boring mm-hmm. you know and we did that for a while and then i started just being getting tired of it you know because yeah. it, it really is completely boring so yeah we, i mean that was i think it took uh, me, I always do. I would always tell Juji, um, uh, you know, I'm doing the opposite of them and mm-hmm. doing the opposite of everyone because th- that works when everyone's doing the same thing. Yeah. So well, I remember my one of my first impressions of you guys um, on the YouTube channel was, uh, I think it was just a the, the top of the, the most recent video at the time, and you were opening mail hanging upside down from a from a power rack. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, what? Well, this, this is amazing. And you guys were hilarious. Um, in the process of it, so I I like the fact that you you mix in the entertainment, the mm-hmm. comedy, as well as a storyline, competitions, whatever. It's 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 a different level of entertainment compared to like you said, just work out. Here's what I ate today. Mm-hmm. Thanks for coming, kind of thing. So I think on the social media overall, it's just uh, there's a, we're coming out of a trend now. I think, in my opinion, where uh, most people's default is to try to be cool. You know what I mean? And yeah. fitness especially is bad at it where they're really kind of behind the times in terms of they're still trying to be cool when all these other sectors and industries and, and cultures from different things, people are starting to realize no one wants to follow or really gives a shit about someone who's trying to be cool. They want to see or someone perfect. Yeah. perfect. They want to see they want to see more raw, having a good time, yeah, having fun and just progressing and grinding. Mm-hmm. You know, they yeah. want to see people who are working hard and who are light about themselves. Yeah. And it's been uh, easy for us to 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 kind of like. Well, we've been doing that the whole time. Yeah, we've been doing and that the our, whole time. our personalities. For example, at the seminars, people who meet us, they're like, "Oh, you guys! I, did, I was going to be kind of nervous and meeting you all, and like, I, but you're just the same as you are in the videos, and you're you just." really nice to get along with and that's how we've always been yeah you know the the videos are just what we would normally do is hanging out with people and you know i, I always just dick around with people and, and make <laughs> jokes and and have weird dialogue like that and ask weird questions so it's yeah. just uh yeah it's you just guys how are we very do easy going guys get, don't be wrong but um 
the the with the growth of your channel and and I guess the fame that has now come with it. Mm-hmm. Um, what's that journey been like? The, going from creating a channel to now almost globally, people stopping you saying good day, wanting photos. How's that been for you guys? Mm. Uh, I mean, it has its ups and downs. You know, um, at first, you know, it's like, oh wow, these people like they recognize you know me from especially in weird places, you know, <laughs> and then, I, and then at some point it's, uh, you realize they're wrecking, you, you start to figure out where they're recognizing you from yep. and you start to see little patterns in the way they interact with you. So for example, uh, a big part of the difficulty we've had with the channel, and this is why we renamed the channel to Juji and Tom recently was because people were not recognizing Tom <laughs> we were literally together. And then they come up and it was just like eyes on me. They, it was like he was invisible. Mm-hmm. And it's just really a disgusting experience. I mean, I don't know if you've been out and you've been recognized maybe with Heather. And, uh, you know, someone will say hi and they won't even look at Heather. It's yeah, like, you're yeah. with someone. Yeah. You know, common courtesy is to be like, hey, guys, you yeah. know. But they're just blinded and they just look at me because I'm a, I don't know. But, yeah. you know, I had a theory that part of it was because the um, the thumbnails only included my face most of the time. And they weren't even watching the videos. They yep. just saw my uh, face and name and are recommended and they don't even really care all they care about at that point is that oh you're i know you're someone and i just want a, a trophy picture with you real quick mm-hmm. and i'll take it and run yep. and when i started to think about that i was like oh these interactions aren't really genuine you know yep. i really appreciate it more when they will come up and they'll say hi to both of us and then they'll recognize us for something particular and each individually and then i know like oh these people are actually here and they're saying hi because they actually care about what we do. They're not just in it to get a, a picture trophy and the run off and not even know really what we are because they just saw a blip on a, a Reddit thread or a GIF or yep. anything else. So mm-hmm. it's it's yeah. kind of been a mixed bag. Of like you realize everyone that comes up to you isn't you know mm. you know. So are you you're GIF or GIF? You're a GIF guy. What did I say? <laughs> you said GIF. You said I'm GIF. a GIF guy. I'm a GIF guy. I'm a okay. GIF guy. I'm 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 GIF party. Yeah. yeah. You're GIF. Yeah, I'm GIF. I, I I donated to the GIF party. The uh, I, I think yeah, it, it was just the uh, also. I mean, he's a uh, a big dude, he, a bodybuilder. Even like if we take out the equation of of people recognizing him from the internet, you know, even if we're at a, a Lowe's or a, any place, like a cashier is gonna just like, he's in a tank top and he's got long hair and he's muscular. People will just gonna are gonna notice him more over me that's just yeah. how it is in life well, but when i when i saw you for the first time uh i don't know i have a habit of seeing people and immediately thinking of somebody else that they look like sure and, sure and you were sasha cohen as borat and i'm like man yeah you can yeah. play that role perfectly yeah to yeah and, and luckily juji doesn't get any of that but i look like a lot of different yeah different uh characters and people <laughs> and Zachary Quinto and and uh, Ben Stiller and and uh, Sasha Baron Cohen getting bored at f- five hundred comments in the last two <laughs> yeah. videos. Yeah, you know, there'll be a comment on a YouTube video. Do, has anyone noticed that he looks like Borat? Yeah, everyone has noticed everyone and, and has. commented, yeah. and that's the only thing going on. Do you guys yeah. not even read one or two comments? <laughs> yeah, into a yeah. Thing? And I, I it, Borat's married <laughs> to Isla Fisher, so I will I will take that. Yeah. She's Australian. Actually. She is. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. a little crazy too. Tom, do you have yeah. a favorite? Do I have a favorite? Yeah, I, I mean if. Or a least favorite or a favorite for me? Uh, no, I don't. I don't Just really like have whatever. a favorite. I like Zachary Quinto. He's, I think he's the best looking that they they say me about me. But um, uh, but the yeah, uh, like I said, it's just a cashier or or simple as this. Like when he's on an airplane, he doesn't even notice this, but I do. Mm-hmm. He's on an airplane. He asks for a can of soda water, right? Yeah. Uh, nobody can ask for a can. You know that, John, right? I didn't know that. No, but because of who you look like and, and how big you are, they'll just give you a can. Nobody, <laughs> you don't even notice these things, you know. Uh, we're just, uh, the, so there's just things that, that comes yeah. with being a big dude and uh, an interesting guy with long hair that it's just, it's not even about the internet thing sometimes. Most yeah. of those people don't recognize them that are cashiers that are just like, oh my God, where do you work out, bro? Yeah. Uh, and and that's fine, uh, yeah. That's but good. it was just more of the um, the uh, the amount of times it was happening and all that was that that becomes trying. You know, there were, I mean, there were times like uh, a girl would interrupt my set at a, a, a workout. We'd be mm-hmm. doing a workout. Someone would interrupt my set to take a picture of him with her. Yeah, or, or or yeah. or him or whatever, or people would yeah. stop me. People don't say anything. Get a little bit blinded by the 
the fame that they've they've been captured with and right and right forget courtesy yeah so that's stuff. it's uh it just wears on a person and he doesn't like how some people treat him as well i mean they're they're very much treating him like a a monkey in a cage and a, a man that's a spectacle right that's a yeah a circus act that they've seen before that they want to show the picture of their friends or whatever. And that's fine. That's just the internet as a, as a celebrity, whether it's D list, a list, B list, not saying you're D list, maybe saying you're C list, but <laughs> whether, whatever you list. are, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're on the spectrum. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, the, it, it just gets that in general. You just kind of have to, do Deal with it what, as it yeah it's evolves. you're going to accept that that is but it, it was very wearing and we needed to, the, the 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 people that are like oh, you know notice tom he needs to be noticed and all these things it was it, like it was less about this kind of like noticing and and uh begging for attention i wasn't begging for attention i yeah. was begging for Th- these things to happen less and i needed to do something about it yeah, we yeah, needed yeah. to do something about it juji knew how upsetting it was for me for years you know yeah, yeah, yeah. over a huge span of time of me working super hard on these things to just feel like crap all the time you know and yeah, uh the yeah. videos don't get keep getting made with high quality if i don't feel very good about them <laughs> over time well right? so. look, for me personally i f- i like your sense of, of humor in your videos that that comes through very very clearly like juji you're hilarious in the in the way you act but i get a lot of enjoyment out of your humor directly so yeah so yeah it's definitely a uh, a complimentary team that you guys we have. are i mean he's very physical comedy you know he's and i'm very much dialogue based yeah. comedy and and weird accents and shit you know he's like uh, i'm like a <laughs> a taller slightly less looking david spade and he's chris farley you know <laughs> Right. Awesome. Guys, we, we're, we're going to take a break here. We're going to be back in a moment with more from uh, John and Tom. Well, you take breaks? We do. We we take breaks here. Jesus. The camera Jesus. takes breaks is because he's got a The camera is about, to, about oh. to shut off. He's got to go over there and turn them off. Ready to go. Alrighty, guys, we are back from that break. We've got, of course, with us Tom Boyden, John Cole uh, from the... Tom and Juji, Juji and Tom. Which way is it? Either or is either good. or. Tom Juji, yeah. Juji Tom YouTube channel. Um, these guys are out here in Australia as part of a uh, train fun seminar, as you guys have heard earlier in the program. Some uh, some strongman stuff. Tell me, guys, again, are you guys going to be coming back to Australia? Are we going to do it again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to come back. We're going to plan to come during your uh, summer, though. Mm-hmm. Summer, so probably December. Hit the beaches. Yeah. You guys didn't get to do much sightseeing this time around, did you? No, but we don't. I mean, he doesn't care about sightseeing. And I, I do poisonous animals. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I, we. It's a different. Like, if I were to travel on a, I don't know. I don't even vacations. I never really did anyway. I can't like sit on a beach. Yeah. You know that's for for fucking white people, dude. <laughs> you know I don't know. It's just. <laughs> eh, we when we're working and when we're traveling to destinations, for example, uh, this is a horrible example because no one would actually do anything there. But Ottawa, Canada, you know, uh, we're traveling there just to see Devon, and yeah. we're not going to see the sights of Ottawa, right? <laughs> uh, and, and like, uh, we did it in Iceland, and it was cool because his wife was with us, but. Uh, he doesn't really care, and and he's not really a traveler. Or surf or anything? No, I mean I would, I would do all that stuff. Uh, you know, I'm I'm more of the I would I travel for pleasure. He doesn't really do that, you know. Mm. So it just doesn't make sense for us. So to maybe ne- next time we just need to combine an opportunity for you guys to do like a, a surf life. Right. Well, that was Iron in my. Man. It was in my plan. I had yeah. a I had a surf video as an idea, but it would have been cold as a sin. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. time. That, but that is true. That is true. He would be funny on a surfboard. That would be great. <laughs> and I've been wanting <laughs> to do a bad. board sport that would not injure him because skateboarding, yeah. surf, uh, snowboarding, all that. Right, surfing. Yeah. You really have to do something idiotic to mess yourself up. Yeah, you're probably gonna get sting, stung by a jellyfish before you break your <laughs> bones. Right. <Yeah. laughs> Well, you guys haven't, uh, hopefully today even, you get the chance to come across some uh, Australian wildlife that uh, may scare you, but uh, we'll that'll be in a different video, but we got we got, we got got so much down here, as you guys know, that'll <laughs> knock you off, but 
Anyway, <laughs> guys, I want to know, where did the name Juju Mufu even come from? <laughs> yeah, I was uh, 13 years old, and this um, the original way to get on the internet back when I was growing up was called America Online. Okay. And so <laughs> I was creating a screen name for it. I had just turned 14. My old screen name was John Call 13. So I was like, I'm turning 14. I'm no longer 13. I need a new screen name. I learned my lesson not to put my age as a number at the end of my name because I'm just going to get a year older. So I'm trying to come up with a cool <laughs> name. At the time, I was still trying to come up with a cool name. Yep. I was saying, you know, you go through these phases in life where you go through cool or just like being yourself and funny. So I was kind of come up with a cool name for about a half hour there, jamming away, and everything's taken and adding numbers to it because it depends a number every time mm. something's taken. So after about a half hour, I realized how long I had sat there and tried to come up with a name. I got frustrated and just, Juju Mufu. There you go. And it logged me in. Because it wasn't taken, obviously. Yeah. And then I started using it, and people started to get to know me online. I opened a website. <laughs> uh, people knew me as Juji from the other websites I was communicating with online. And it's, I got stuck with it. So that name is like 20 years old now. Yeah. There you it's go. an old name. Yeah, I've heard some interesting variations of it from various people commentating on it's the easy, book. It's easy to butcher. Jimmy Choo Jimmy Choo. Yeah, Juju. Uh, yeah. Jimmy Choo Choo. Jimmy Choo Choo. That, that Choo-choo was John Brzezink, the greatest oh. arm wrestler of all time. Jimmy, you call me what? Jimmy Choo Choo. Jimmy Choo Choo. And that was. wasn't derogatory. That was he did he didn't know how to pronounce your sure, name. Sure, sure. And uh, yeah, I like Jimmy Choo Choo. It feels like you could open like a, a line of handbags or shoes. Or Jimmy Choo Choo. That's good. <laughs> Juju is the most often mistaken. Hey, Juju. Uh, Juju. It's gotten to the point now I where I don't know if it, people are just trolling me, right, or if uh, they're still making a mistake. No, I think they're. I, I've told you, it's it's not. It, it, they know it's Juju Mufu, but it's dialectical, and it's yeah. uh, it's how it's just how their accent works. Works with Juji. G is not uh, like it's not an often used way of saying anything. You know, yeah. think what what's the other bougie bougie? You know, yeah. what's what boogie, are some boogie boogie bougie? Bo- yeah, boogie. Well, that's not bo- yeah. bougie. You know, yeah. so Juji is a little odd thing to say in the in certain dialects, and we've noticed in the southern people and uh, black dudes like love saying Juju. You know, yeah, it's just how it is. Like. Southern dudes will just be like, hey, Juju, man, man I've seen you on that dumb uh, fucking Instagram, dad. Let me get a pic. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, and then, that was your Southern and dude. And then, yeah, yeah, that was my hick, th- Southern dude. And then we got, hey, and, then we, and then there's Thor, just like, Juju, Juju, <laughs> Juju. Hey, Juju. Juju. Uh, Juju. Uh, uh, but that's the. Icelandic, too. You know, he, he's not, he knows it's Juju Mufu. He's seen the name. But it's yeah. just uh, <laughs> yeah. You mentioned Instagram there. Uh, Instagram very separate from your YouTube in terms of its style and its content. Uh, who dreams up crazy stuff like the the, the flamingos, the 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 log lifts on fire, and all that sort of stuff? Oh, yeah. Juju dreams up all that stuff, man. Tom's come yeah. up with a lot of ideas as well. I mean, yeah. we're always coming yeah. up with ideas together, and sometimes yeah. you know, we'll just has, pass. Has it ever on. gone wrong? Have you ever burned something down? Uh, Nothing has gone. Uh, for real, uh, it's it, nothing has gone horribly wrong. Uh, I mean, there's been idiotic uh, cleanups after things. You know, <laughs> yeah. that's probably the biggest thing that's gone wrong is the cleanup afterwards taking the longest amount of time. Yeah. yeah. But no, nothing. Y- you've been very, very lucky, I believe, with your uh, stunts, and and also very careful. And of in, course, to do something that you're all over the OHNS, I'm sure, and everything. All over the what? Uh, occupational health and safety. Everyone signing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, legal yeah, documents. Yeah, of course, of course. Of course yeah, course, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's easy just to know whether something's going to work or not because you can always find a way to get into it with less weight or less resistance or just get a feel for the movement before you even bother with it, you know. I mean, yeah. like, so uh, one of the ideas he came with, came up with, which was one of my best performing videos, was uh, dips with a uh, transformer bar, which is a safety squat bar variation, mm-hmm. on my back with weight. And it looks like I'm on a uh, have a the thing looks insane. I love this product. Oh, so, it, yeah, that's it looks it one. looks ridiculous. It's one of my favorite things to do videos with. And it looks like a jet pack. Like I'm on a yeah. jet pack on the rings. And he just <laughs> came up with this in the kitchen table and we just ran out there and filmed it. But like before you even get into it, you can put it on your back. It has no weight on it. You can get on the rings and see. And then you can add a little bit of weight and a little yeah. bit more. And then you're at some things like, oh, this is a good video now. This is enough weight. People will appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. And so it's not like you just jump in and just tear a muscle or something. Right. Yeah. And that one is not, that's not incredibly taxing. He's done more weight on a dip before. Mm. You know, it just mm-hmm. looks wild, but it definitely requires just, a high level. You just of skill. lay it, layer the levels to it. And <laughs> yeah. Like I did it with, yeah. with the bar and it's like 45 pounds and, 
pretty easily. It's just uh, adding a bit more to make it look a little crazier and and also skewing the perception of the internet, you know? Yeah, Use yeah, bigger yeah. plates to make it seem like it's heavier <laughs> weight. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got to do that type of stuff. And uh, For example, in arm wrestling, you know, um, we're constantly getting uh, people telling us, hey, dude, is Larry Wheels getting into arm wrestling too? He's just been beating people, man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's... He's just uh, a lot of the guys right now are just like the arm wrestling bodybuilders in a row or something, just to, to yeah, for the for, for the viral, viral video. video. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, yeah, it, that is a just it's like using bumper plates to make your yeah. weight look bigger. <laughs> you know, Larry's the Larry's the bumper for an arm wrestler. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the bodybuilders or, or, are his bumper plates yeah, essentially. Yeah. 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 But the, yeah. but the thing about this is is fake weights is one thing. Yeah. Um these aren't fake weights because mm. they're actually weights that have the weight. They just they, they look just, different, yeah. but also Visually. we will always put in a I always put in the description like this right. is 100 pounds. It looks like it's 225. It's 100 pounds if yeah. they read. Yeah. And also at the end of the video with Larry beating all those people yeah. in uh, Dubai, if you actually watch to the end of the video, it goes black for a split second and then he's giving them money like it was a joke. Yeah. And there's so many people on the internet that just see the first thing right. as they're going through like, oh my God, Larry's a god at arm wrestling. God, yeah. Lee, wow. And and like, and it was a joke. He said it was a joke. But it's but headlines, man. It's everyone headlines. reads headlines. Everyone watches headlines. Everyone looks at a photo and headlines. It's just that how people digest on the internet. Reddit is like the prime example. You you don't actually go into the post and read it. Dude. It's just <laughs> about that headline. headline. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, and arm wrestling in particular is a sport that is very easily misinterpreted by people. It, it, until you've oh, yeah. gripped up and felt an arm wrestler, or it, it's it's not what it appears mm -hmm. in a, in many respects. So um, yeah, guys, another another side of your business is grip genie. Um, mm -hmm. and smelling salts and things like that, yeah. <laughs> which I tried and I saw it knock the socks off many people um, at, during your train fund seminar. But um, tell us about Grip Genie. Right. So uh, when did we get in that? When did we actually start doing Grip videos, Tom? Was it March of 2018? Yeah, the first one was actually with John Hack. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, well, we did one with Martins Lisi's at his gym in January of 2018. That was the first grip video specifically. It was called Martins Lisi's Grips More Than You. And uh, that one was just us playing around because uh, we were at training hall. And um, we knew Martins was good at grip. Mm, so that was the, the first one. And then you bought some tools after that. Yep. And, and then March, we did one with John Hack as just kind of an extra video because he was in town just for a little bit. And we figured, all right, we'll do a regular workout and then we'll do a grip one just to uh, get an extra video. And that's when I, uh, yeah, we did that. And I remember putting a lot of effort into it, actually. I had some like crazy intros edited and stuff. And then, um, and then that was the first one and did okay. And then we kept trying it a few times because we just both liked doing it. Mm -hmm. They were pretty easy videos to actually do like film and do it's like you can film like five youtube videos over the course of a few days you have to work with someone mm -hmm. and you can fit in a grip video because you're all taxed out and yeah. tired and right but you can always do some grip training and you get a cool video and people can relate to it so it's like hey, sure. this is something we can keep doing you know yeah give me two seconds guys i had a camera turn off i heard it too <laughs> yeah. no then which one fight 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 the camera that's the that's the big boy yeah, yeah that's sony battery yeah, those things' batteries aren't uh, the greatest. Yeah, it's okay. What, um, guys? Ryan Bowen has been an extremely generous host to us. He's been so so kind, even with his freaking family having horrible health problems. He's been hosting us around and driving us around. So you're you're too kind, man. Thanks, Ryan. Even if you use Sony cameras, you're you're such a kind man. <laughs> Oh, awesome! All right, we are back again. Hopefully, we sorted that camera out. But yeah, so grip, grip, GD, you guys got into grip, um, and now it's become a business for you. Um, well, the cool thing is that yeah, we started doing the grip videos uh, early in 2018, but the grip videos are actually what really started to launch us off because we did this video with uh, a rock climber named Isaac at one of our local gyms. Isaac, the 110 pound rock climber, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know. And that was our first viral video on YouTube. Mm. So that was the one that started, that was our first million view video. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that was like, that was the turning point where like a grip video of all things was the one that 
started doing it. And then all the group videos we did after that for the next six months were like huge hits, it seemed like. Yeah. yeah. And we were no, giving... Not everyone, but yeah, a, a lot, lot of, of them, them were. Yeah. yeah. And we were giving a lot of free advertisement to these grip companies, companies. that weren't really reciprocating or helpful for us or, yep. you know, not the, not the greatest groups to deal with. And this is like, why don't... It just made make, sense. Yeah, Tom was thinking, why don't we... Uh, we can make grip tools. We have some ideas. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah, so then... Uh, we were in a car, and I, I remember. Just, yeah, yeah. I just thought of the name Grip Genie after a lot of thinking, and then uh, yeah, I just spent the next three months figuring out how to get the products, how to source it, what products to get. We kept getting prototypes back and forth, and then what products to do, and then building out the website, building out the brand, building out the packaging, and yeah, I did all that stuff, and then. Uh, we launched it, a soft launch with a manufacturer in North Carolina in uh, October, uh, so November of 2018, and it did really well. People mm-hmm. bought it, and it flew off the shelves, and that was cool. We didn't have that many, but uh, and then we did the major launch in uh, in March of 2019 yep. after the Arnold. After yeah, it was about. Good six months of consistently just trying to get this moving along and and all the products. I mean, we, uh, I think launching with the amount of products we did was a poor decision um, because of the logistics of getting every product right. And I was juggling all of that and it was very, very difficult. Yep. Uh, But yeah, we we, we figured it out. So we launched with chalk and grippers and grip tools and, and one arm wrestling cone. Yep. And uh, yeah, now we got a warehouse and we got like seven employees, and, and uh, I yeah, run it's all moving. Yeah, I run that stuff, and and uh, and uh, big things for the future. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be working. Uh, Devin's one of our next athletes. Uh, we're going to work with the WAL on some stuff, hey. some <laughs> arm wrestling specific things, and yeah. uh, that hasn't yeah. been announced yet, but it's been in the works for a while, and we're just kind of letting there. WAL season toned down so we can actually uh, yeah. hash some stuff out. And that makes sense. Yeah. That, that was actually going to be one of my next questions, or, and I guess kind of the, the question where I wanted to end was with, is with what's next for you guys? Oh, I'm going to quit everything and just be an arm wrestler full time. going to go all in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I found out of all the things we do, it's the only thing I actually, actually care le- about. leaving his wife yeah. on yeah. top Yeah, of this is too. the start of it. I was testing. This Australia trip for us has been a tester. I just want to see how I did away from <laughs> Sam for this long and so far. Right. Yeah. I'd like to personally apologize on behalf of all arm wrestlers that ask you that question 10,000 times. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's interesting. I'm sorry. Nothing against arm wrestlers. They're passionate. But it, they are very passionate. But they're the only ones that have ever phrased a question in the way, do you, are you going <sighs> to take arm wrestling seriously? Yeah, I, I, we, we don't get strong men. Honestly, man, it's, it's a very interesting predicament we've run into with the arm wrestlers. We really like all of you guys, and but they all, the only group, we, we work with rock climbers. We work with strong men and... And all these Ninjas, power lifters. Yeah, power all lifters. these people. Ninja Warrior participants don't go, hey, dude, uh, so are you going to be taking Ninja Warrior seriously? Or, hey, man, are yeah. you going to stop and, and <laughs> take Strongman really seriously and compete? Yeah. You know, we it's, li- it's super rare for them to ask that. I think, then, the, I think the reason why I'm wrestling that way is because we're, we're such a small niche sport. Yeah, it's yeah. really in a growth period that... When we see people like yourselves get involved, we get excited. And we're like, oh, my right. goodness. Because this, this, you... Know it or not, and I think you guys do. You've actually been a big catalyst to this, the growth of the sport. Um, so I think people are excited, and they hope you, you hope you're enjoying yourselves, right? Right. And yeah. You're not going to disappear, and they're guarded. <laughs> uh, I would be guarded of a, a sport I care a lot about that's growing. That the the wrong people get into it for the wrong reasons, and it can skew and change and warp the sport into something you don't want it to be. Yeah. But when people ask us that, I'm like, Hey, man, I've made. 30 videos about arm wrestling that I put a fuckload of work into yeah, every time, serious. man. <laughs> look at the bottom eight videos. You, yeah, you look, awesome. look at the bottom eight videos. Let's look at that. Okay, Juji competed. First of all, he got fucked up, got hurt. Uh, and then I made a video. Everybody else released like you, Artem, and all that. Not, not, down yeah, playing yeah, you no, guys no, but I you guess. guys released like raw footage and these are, these are the pro <laughs> arm wrestlers releasing just raw footage of the bottom eight and I'm taking like a hundred hours to edit the video and make it into a storyline and all this shit, you know, like yeah. who's taking it seriously guys. We, yeah. We're taking it very seriously. And we, we arm wrestle every week and we both really like it. And you've seen me, yeah. me improve myself. You've seen Juji improve. Like we both 
really like it. And uh, but unfortunately, we can't drop everything for it yeah. because then we wouldn't have oh, a well, career. Another camera. You hear that? <laughs> Your camera. Your camera quit everything to go arm wrestle. Oh, yeah, my. All right, I got to check which camera again. Right. You, you this podcast a, is ending strong. Will you get a Panasonic, <laughs> dude? <laughs> Even yeah. a canon, man. I mean, we, we really like arm wrestling, and we're going to continue making videos. And we've developed, like, Devin and Ryan and all the arm artem. And we train it off camera. I mean, yeah, yeah. not everything we do. I mean, if, it, if we're only doing it for videos, that's one thing. Yeah. But I will actually be holed up in my garage on a Saturday or something doing an arm workout. And I'll right. throw on a bunch of arm wrestling stuff without even doing Instagram stories or anything. I'm working the exercises. How is that not taking something serious? Yeah, I mean, Ninja I Warrior. Care, I people it. should be asking Juju about if he takes Ninja Warrior seriously because he's actually training arm wrestling. We just make Ninja Warrior videos every now and again. He's, <laughs> he's never trained it since, like, 2013 or 14, 15, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's... I think... I think th- Thanks for holding up the, the show then whilst mm. I was changing batteries. That was very professional. Mm. But um, I think the other component of the Take It Serious question is not the, the amount of effort and interest you guys have, but I think a lot of people, particularly in yourself, did you just see how much of a strength athlete you are and you're at an elite level of power. Your fundamental strengths are actually very close to where they need to be or ready to be a, an arm wrestler. So I think there's a, just an intrigue there on people... Wondering, are you going to ever feel like you want to be a top 10 in the world kind mm-hmm. of arm wrestler? Because um, I think that's part of the question as well. Yeah. But as you said, I know you're busy and you've got a million things other in life that you enjoy. And I think that may be a component of it as well. Yeah, I don't know if it's a weakness, but uh, you know, when I said, I don't think it's very healthy to set goals like that. I mean, a lot of people are like, you need a goal. I'm more about, I have an idea of, you know, improvement and betterment mm. but i'm more focused on the things that actually make me better i, I would be more interested in, in figuring out a way to make my arm healthy yeah and uh because that's difficult and we're going to film a video with that pretty soon with you i want to yep. learn some stuff from you awesome. uh, mm-hmm. and just you know figure out a way to get my life in order to where i'm just eating better and better than i am now and just getting the recovery and and learning more and then that will just make me a better arm wrestler i don't yeah. need to be like i need to be top 10 what is that going to be doing anything for me at all in any way shape or form of actually getting me there it'll happen if it happens otherwise yeah. you know it's like when when i'm asked like well, what are you gonna what are you gonna deadlift today what are you gonna work up to it's like ah uh, you know i don't know how i feel i'm I fe- i'm just gonna work on feeling the best i can and see where i'm mm-hmm. gonna get at and then when i get near where my top end is then i might rely on external uh, motivation, you know, yeah. like my, my yeah. friends, Tom, and, uh, you know, anyone we're working with, well, Steffi Cohen or someone around me will be, be the ones to push me past the point. And but also, I, Ryan, like, we, we uh, setting expectations like that for ourselves when we have to do so many varied things for the videos and yeah, so yeah, many yeah. varied things with other people. If we went into a deadlift session with the idea that we have to get this weight, there's very little chance that we will because we've done arm wrestling, because we've done these videos the day before and because we did flips, you know, it's just like, yeah. we can't, uh, like, we, we set expectations for ourselves, but there's very few people that are deadlifting 600, 66 pounds, 600, near 600 squat, and then doing flips and aerials and splits the next day. So we, we kind of have, there's a definite unique uh, expectations you have to set when you, you're doing such a diverse amount of things that really no yeah. one can uh, honestly, no, I mean, this is not like trying to be uh, like, oh, we're the most unique people on the fracking world. <laughs> but no one can relate to the skill set that John has and yeah, the yeah. different stuff we're training all the time. This is unheard of. You know, this is like definitively no one has ever trained all these strength sports all the time at, at a high level. Mm. Yeah, I right? agree. <laughs> and, 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 and frankly, on arm wrestling in particular, it doesn't pay enough for anyone to drop their rest of their life and go and dedicate no, themselves. <laughs> no. No. If, if, okay, here's here's a dream scenario. If arm wrestling, if we could do it and train it three times a week on top of our other stuff and our arms didn't hurt and we're not injured, frick mm-hmm. yeah, bro. Yeah, we're man. training that shit. Oh, hell yeah, dude. We're training three, three one-hour sessions a week. Mm-hmm. But uh, 
doesn't work at the moment. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the body only has so much work. capacity. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I know some of you arm wrestlers will not actually train your other arm <laughs> because you want all the regenerative capacity to, to go, to go that into one that arm. one arm. Yeah, and training yeah, yeah. both is going to take some, that. even just a limb. Think about what it's like when you do the right. whole body in that respect, you know? So much central nervous system oh, going you, on. Yeah, you only have so much fuel. Yeah, you know, awesome. so many resources, but yeah, we love arm wrestling, and I find it has great carryover to building arm muscle. You know, mm-hmm. and that's a goal of mine is just to look jacked, and so it's <laughs> it, it, it's complementary with the. Uh, and yeah. Tom's forearms are fucking huge now. Yeah, by the way, yeah. his arms are blowing up. Arm it's, wrestling at grip. Uh, I didn't have arms before that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a big factor in that respect, and. Yeah, it's a lot. I, I love it. I, I am one of those people that is truly addicted to the sport, as you can probably tell. But mm-hmm. um, uh-huh. yeah, I'll, but anyway, guys, You're, you got meth brewing in your garage <laughs> over there. You do? Yeah, it's not. A, it's not an arm wrestling gym. It's a meth den, dude. He's right. a fucking bogan over That's here. That's one of the coolest things is though you can really train for this sport in, in obscure ways. You can do it in your garage at home and, uh, yeah. and make it all the way to the top. But anyway, guys, <laughs> I'm gonna wrap that one up there. But thank you so much for coming on the show today and spending time and inviting me along to the train fun seminars. I had a blast. I actually, you got me back flipping the first time in like 18 years. So uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I was man. very happy with that, man. I didn't break my neck. So yeah, well, thank you for being part <laughs> of it, Ryan. Yeah, that no, was a pleasure. Thank all you, right, man. guys. See you next time. <laughs> this one? Yeah, that's the one. Oh. See it is? Actually, this one. This one. This one. All right, over there. That's got all of us, okay. right? Okay, what if they're all <laughs> turned off right now? Well, we've got audio to say <laughs> this. <laughs> all right. Yes, that's a bitch!